What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with another subtracting lesson. Today we are going to be taking a look at a shortcut on how to regroup across a zero. So uh, let's not lose anything and get started today. All right, here are our steps that we've been talking about the past couple lessons for regrouping, right? Here's what we're asking ourselves, and that is more on the top, then no need to stop, more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. All right, we have an awesome subtraction song to help you remember that rule, and that's kind of a shortcut, right? But let's take a look at what does that actually mean? What is regrouping? Right, because for us to really understand what regrouping across the zero is doing, we have to really understand what regrouping is. So here I'm going to start with 325, and I've just set that up in my HTO chart, right? I got my 300s, my 210s, and my 51s. So if I'm doing standard algorithm, I'm going to go ahead and set this up over here so we can kind of follow along and see what it looks like in standard algorithm as we regroup with our HTO chart. So I have 51s, and I want to take away 8, right? Well, if you only have $5, I can't come beat you up and take away eight. So what we say right here in the standard algorithm is more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. So I'm gonna go next door to my tens place and I'm gonna get 10 ones more, right? Because if I take one 10, I can unbundle it, right, into 10 ones, okay? That's just using place value knowledge, right? So here I have my 10 crazy ones which really gives me now a total of 15 ones. So when we do standard algorithm, it looks like this, right? More on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. So I now only have one 10 left, right? Because I gave it over to my ones place. And when I added 10 ones more, I now have 15 ones. Now I can do 15 minus eight, which is gonna leave me with seven ones left. So if I do it on my HTO chart, you can see I just got rid of five ones there and another three ones, which means I've now taken away eight ones, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones left over. Now I want to take away one ten, right? So one minus one, I can do that. I have one ten, I can just take that away, which gives me zero tens left, right? So one ten minus one ten would be zero tens. And then I have three hundreds, and I don't want to take away anything, so standard algorithm, I could put a zero there, so three minus zero is three. So when you look at doing the HTO chart, we call it regrouping because we didn't borrow. Some teachers say borrow. We didn't borrow anything. We took 110 and we turned it into 10 more ones, right? That's what this standard algorithm up top right here shows me. It's not a shortcut if you understand what you're doing. So when you regroup, you're going to the next place value over and you're getting 10 more to add to what you already have. Which leads us to a really interesting question right here. What happens when there isn't anything next door, right? So here I have three minus six. I know I can't do that, right? If you only have three, can't take away six. So what we say is more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. But what happens when behind this door is nothing, when it's a zero? You can't borrow from something that doesn't have anything, right? So what do we do in this situation? That's what we're talking about in this lesson. So our objective today, today I will be able to subtract three digit numbers with regrouping across a zero by using my standard algorithm. So some would say this is just a shortcut. And yes, it is a shortcut, but what we want you to understand is why it works mathematically, right? So we want you to be able to do the shortcut to make it easy, but also understand what is really happening with the math. That's why we have our HTO chart of mathematics, and we're gonna do it in the standard algorithm right next to it. So first of all, whenever I'm doing my standard algorithm subtraction, put the bigger number on top, right? I'm gonna line it up starting with the ones place to make sure my place values are lined up. Let me go ahead and set up my HTO chart by setting up 703 over here. All right, right? So the zero in the tens place means I have nothing here. So I have seven hundreds, I have zero tens, and I have three ones. And I want to take away 86 from that. So just like we do in our standard algorithm, we're going to start right here in our ones place, right? And we're going to think to ourselves, okay, more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. If you have three, I can't take six away from you. But when you go next door to regroup from the tens place, right, to take that and then unbundle it and give yourself 10 ones more, you don't have any tens, right? You can't borrow from a zero. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use our place value knowledge to think about 700s as 70 tens, 
right? Because I know that each of these 100 flats, right, are made up of 10 tens. So I would have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 tens right here in the hundreds place. I gotta use my place value knowledge to think about this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to replace my seven flats with 70 tens. All right, so I had to spread out the rods a little bit, but you can see right here that I have 10 tens, right? So this would be equal to one flat. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 tens which still gives me my 700s. I haven't changed anything. I'm just thinking about 700s as 70s. Now, if I want to regroup, I can take away one of my 10s from here and I can get 10 more to my 1s place. So mathematically, what, we, what it looks like we just did is, right, we had 70 10s instead of 700s and now we have 69 10s left over. So should we, have, we should have 690, really, left over my hundreds place. And here we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69 tens left. Okay, so here's kind of the shortcut. And here's what really is happening when we regroup mathematically. Now I have 13 ones, and now I can take away six, right? So 13 minus six is seven. And I'm going to move my nine tens that I took the one ten from over here, right? So now I have six hundreds here. I have nine tens left over. So nine tens minus eight tens would leave me with one ten. And then I'm not taking away any hundreds, right? So six hundreds minus zero hundreds would be six hundred seventeen, okay? So the difference between seven hundred three and eighty six is six hundred seventeen. The shortcut is really just using your place value knowledge to think about your hundreds place and how it relates to your tens place. Seven hundreds was really 70 tens, so I could take away one ten, which left me with 69 tens left over, and then I was set up to subtract. This leads us to our key thought, which is when we can't regroup from the next place value because it is a zero, we use our place value knowledge to regroup from the next two place values at the same time. Let's take a look at another example. So if you're taking notes, if you're using our notes, go ahead and get those out. Let's set this up, right? We want to find the difference of 500 and 286. So I'm make sure that I put my bigger number on top. I'm going to line it up starting my ones place. I'm going to go right to left. So when I get to my ones place, 0 minus 6, I can't do that. More on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. But when I go next door to my tens place, I don't have anything. So I'm going to come over to my hundreds place, and I'm not going to think about it as 500s. I'm going to think about it as 50 tens because 50 tens has the same value as 500, right? If you had 50 $10 bills, you really have $500 bills. So I'm going to think about this as 50 tens. I'm going to regroup one of those tens. Okay, I'm going to make it 49 tens. And now I had zero ones. I get 10, 10 more. Now I have 10 ones in my ones place. So 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 8 is 1. Or 9 tens minus 8 tens is 1 ten. And then 400s minus 200s is 200. So the difference between 500 and 286 is 214. Again, this isn't a shortcut. We're just using our place value knowledge to help us solve this math. All right, so here's our you try problem. If you think you're ready to try this one by yourself, go ahead and pause the video, try it out, push play to check your answer. If you're not there yet, that's all right. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. We can just do it as another we do problem. So go ahead and pause the video and then push play when you're ready to check your work. Hopefully you at least just paused it and tried. If not, do it with us. Let's go ahead and put 908 minus 289, okay? And I'm gonna do eight ones minus nine ones. I can't do that. So more on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. But <gasps> I don't have anything in the tens place. So I'm going to go to my hundreds place and think about my 900s as 90 tens. Okay, put a box around it. That just kind of helps you visualize it. The box isn't really anything special, just helps us visualize. Now I can take away 110 from 90, which is going to leave me with 89 tens or 800s and 9 tens. And if I had 8 ones and I just got 10 ones more, I now have 18 ones. Now I'm ready to solve. 18 minus 9 is 9. 9 tens minus 8 tens is 1 ten. 8 hundreds minus 2 hundreds is 6 hundreds. So the difference between these two numbers 
is 619. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, we always say it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. We'd love for you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Join our Instructor Beats family. You can check out our new webpage, instructorbeats.com, for some awesome math material. We know there's lots of different options online for you to check out. So we appreciate you spending your time with us today. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.